Mexico has taken over a period of 30 years, 34 percent of the automobile manufacturing business in our country. Think of it. Went to Mexico. China now is building a couple of massive plants where they're going to build the cars in Mexico and think they think that they're going to sell those cars into the United States with no tax at the border. Let me tell you something to China. If you're listening, President Xi, and you and I are friends, but he understands the way I deal. Those big monster car manufacturing plants that you're building in Mexico right now, and you think you're going to get that, you're going to not hire Americans, and you're going to sell the cars to us now, we're going to put a 100% tariff on every single car that comes across the line, and you're not going to be able to sell those cars. If I get elected, now if I don't get elected, it's going to be a bloodbath for the whole, that's going to be the least of it. It's going to be a bloodbath for the country. That'll be the least of it. But they're not going to sell those cars. They're building massive factories. A friend of mine, all he... In his discourse, Donald Trump highlights the potential repercussions of specific policies on the automotive sector, particularly concerning manufacturing facilities in Mexico and trade relations with China. The usage of bloodbath by Trump is metaphorical, symbolizing the grave economic implications rather than a call to arms. His aim is to underscore the gravity of the situation rather than to incite confrontation. The term bloodbath in Trump's lexicon reflects apprehension, conflict, and uncertainty regarding global dynamics. Trump's rhetoric capitalizes on apprehensions about the future and the perceived threats stemming from globalization and international commerce. Examining the portrayal of Trump's statements in left-leaning media reveals a tendency towards sensationalism and misrepresentation, fueling public outrage and critique. Trump's statements serve as a cautionary note regarding the potential economic fallout from certain trade strategies. With his primary motive being the protection of American interests rather than the advocacy of violence.